Well, good evening. This is Hound Dog Steve coming to you on the 7th of October 2017. And uh, we need to talk a little bit about bees, bee colonies, bee populations, and the decline of the aforementioned. Okay, so here we are. Study finds pesticides in world's honey. Okay, this is very disturbing. Uh, this was a group of scientists who were uh, presenting an exhibit at a Swiss Botanical Gardens and they asked visitors and uh, tourists to send them samples of honey from wherever they were in the world. And uh, so they actually got this incredible amount of honey coming in and they started testing for pesticides. And they found that in 75% of the honey there was neonicotinoids. Okay, these are a new kind of pesticide. Uh, it is on the seed of the plant, and when you plant that, it grows up with the plant, making the plant material toxic to insects. Now, a friend of mine, Lorn Thurston, who is a honey man from way, way back, he's written many, many articles about the rusty patch bunny bee, <laughs> bunny bee, uh, the rusty patch honey bee. And uh, what he figures is going on is that when the farmers plant the seeds, uh, the dust from the seeds blows onto the verges at the edges of the fields. And uh, something that the honeybees do is that in the morning they will go down into the dew, they will like fly into the grass on the verges, and uh, they will take that moisture back to the hive to control humidity. And he figures that's how they're picking up the uh, neo neonicotinoids from the, uh, the from the seeds. So the bees of the world are in trouble. And lo and behold, here is another article today calling on a ban because we're talking about our food supply. Okay, bees pollinate one third of all of our food supply, and that is a huge amount. Now I will agree that in my garden in particular, um, secondary pollinators have come in and on a small scale, um, you know, you can get by with secondary pollinators. And, uh, you know, I've uh, cultivated having those pollinators around. And um, actually it's interesting because, uh, you know, I've now become friends with the wasp or the yellow jacket and I'm finding they're a lot less aggressive. Um, I have a big nest in my backyard and I just kind of steer clear of that corner and I just tell people about it, just don't, don't go near there. And, uh, but we were up roofing uh, right close to the nest and um, you know they came up and checked us out and then took off and carried on with their business. But um, you know the rusty patch honeybee is a good example of a bumblebee in severe decline. Uh, this is about a 15 year decline we've been noticing it in the rusty patch bumblebee and uh, is, is it the neonicotinoids? I, I think we're going to find out actually at the end of the day there's a combination of pesticides, herbicides, Wi-Fi, uh, genetic mo modified food, um, uh, sending bees out to monocrops. Um, you know people at home still spray their plants with uh, uh, herbs, uh, sorry, pesticides to keep the bugs off them. And you know, it's all very nice to have a great looking flower, but you know, this is one less place for bees to go collect pollen to, uh, uh, for the hive to, to survive. So what this does is it leaves the bee open to a variety of predators. And uh, actually I just went to Wikipedia and uh, I'm amazed at the amount of predators there are, but uh, for a few, uh, Varroa mites, uh, Acarine, uh, Nosema disease, small hive beetle, wax moss, bacterial diseases, American, American flower, fowl brood, European fowl brood, fungal diseases, chalk brood, stone brood, viral diseases, Cryptoviridae. So uh, when they become vulnerable to these things, uh, it really does a number on the hive. And of course the other thing, because the neonicotinoids uh, affect neural transmission, okay, uh, the bees appear confused 
and this is what many uh, hive owners have reported, is that bees took off in the morning and just didn't come back. So they get lost when they go out uh, scouting for honey, and the ones that do return uh, can't remember, because it also affects memory. You know, all kinds of neurological disorders, and uh, so they can't transmit to other bees where they found the pollen, sources of pollen. Uh, so, um, these are some of the things that affect the bees because of the other situations with uh, the pesticides, the GMOs, and uh, the uh, uh, Wi Fi, the uh, radio towers everywhere broadcasting. So this is a very urgent situation and uh, again it's one of these things I think we need to start calling our MPs. Uh, this has been known for a long time and it seems like we're doing a repeat of the DDT uh, uh, exercise, uh, you know, where we really, it was almost, it was insane, you know, we, we had to get to that point where it was so obvious you know that uh, nesting birds, uh, one of the things, one of the, the side effects of DDT was that it, it thinned the shells of the eggs uh, that birds laid and so uh, quite often the birds would uh, crush the eggs accidentally because they couldn't take uh, um, a bird sitting on those eggs. Uh, so uh, of course it wasn't until the birds really started to decline that we said okay DDT's got to go and that's a really bad thing. And, uh, you know, we're starting to have the same thing now. Uh, I put a video up and um, this is uh, part of that is the declining songbirds uh, in Ontario, in fact, across Canada, everywhere. And so these are the canaries in the coal mine. The bees disappearing. I, I maybe see two or three bees a year in my garden. I don't know where they come from, but um, yeah, virtually none, virtually none at all. And so the interesting thing is that um, so you talk about these pesticides, like my, my, my video about neonicotinoids was uh, demonetized. And uh, you know, here we have, uh, okay, Google and Facebook to tackle fake news. So, uh, Oh, internet giants take steps to help can to help Canadians decode false information as Audible puts onus on platforms to deliver reliable stories. And uh, what those corporations would do uh, to people who are trying to go up against Monsanto or Bayer or some of these massive corporations that can uh, you know leverage Google and uh, YouTube and Facebook uh, with lots and lots of money that the average individual doesn't have to decide that uh, oh no 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 competition here we're not going to allow other voices to be heard and I said this before this is basically going back to the uh, Nazi party gaining power. Okay, the lack of freedom of speech, that was, that was the first thing they did. That was the first thing they did was limit speech. They went to universities, they grabbed professors who questioned uh, the ideology and uh, they made sure that everyone damn well knew that uh, if you spoke up, you were in big trouble. And, uh, and they censored the news, you know, through fear and um, bullying. Uh, they went into news editors' uh, offices and said, this is what you're going to print and you're not going to print this stuff or else. And this is what's happening right now. So uh, here we have articles in the paper talking about pesticides. And uh, as soon as somebody like myself makes a video and brings it up, all of a sudden, it's a conspiracy theory. Uh, this is not a good situation. And uh, it's as I showed you the pictures yesterday of Catalonia and the Spanish police cracking down on the Catalonians who want independence. Um, do you think Google and Facebook working with the government are going to try and shut down the story of neonicotinoids and the dangers to our civilization. 
you know, if we lose these crops that bees pollinate, uh, we're probably looking. Well, Einstein actually said, uh, it, two years after the bees disappear, we will disappear. Okay, so that's that's a pretty stark warning from a, from a very intelligent man uh, that we all respect as probably one of the one of the greatest the greatest thinkers of the last century, anyways, and certainly possibly this century to date too. Uh, but um, so we're we're reaching a danger point, a, a critical mass, and we need to put pressure on the government. The government is so glacial; it's unbelievable. Okay, um, as I, that's why my uh, scorn over the uh, Environmental Advisory Committee. Uh, you know, this has been going. 2007, I started this crusade. 2007. That's 10 years ago. And still, we're making motions to get more information from the council and from the works department. I mean, how long does it actually take to get to that point? So, we all need to put pressure on the government. And I, I'm calling on all of you. Uh, I have uh, 1,300 wonderful subscribers now. And I am so pleased of that. And thank you all for subscribing to this channel and um, commenting that some of the wonderful comments that have been posted on all of the videos that I've made uh, because that's what I'm trying to do is bring up controversial issues and uh, I'm sure this video will be demonetized as well because the AI bots from YouTube are going absolutely crazy and they are taking out everything so uh, anyways please call your MP write a letter take take the time your, your very life and I'm not exaggerating here your very life may depend on contacting your MP and taking that time to write a letter you, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna skip a little bit here but there was a situation a little while back where uh, um, they got an MP got 99 letters of complaint and they considered that a crisis okay so if half of my subscribers that's uh, about 650 people. If you all phoned or wrote to your MP in whatever area and said we need action, this this would be more this would be more than a crisis for the government. Okay, so I urge you to do that at all costs. Our lives do depend upon it, and um, in the meantime, plan your garden for next year and. Uh, Nurture your pollinators. Don't get too excited when you see a, a yellow jacket around. And I'm going to tell you a little trick that I have discovered, and I don't know whether it is the air or it is the CO2 content in the air that you exhale, but when a wasp comes close to your food, just blow on it. Blow on it with enough strength for it to uh, be pushed back. And uh, I have found, for some strange reason, now don't I don't want any comments about my breath, okay? Uh, because I don't think it's that. But uh, blow on blow on that wasp, and you know what? They will just take off. They are not keen on being blown on. Failing that, if you're at a picnic, another thing that you can do uh, for wasps is uh, you put down a small plate to one side with some jam on it, or some honey, or something sweet, and let them feast on that. They 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 you know. I found wasps are actually pretty smart. You know, they uh, they'll come out, come up and check you out. It's when you start waving your arms and flailing it. Uh, this is when they get upset and people get stung. Uh, most stings are accidental when they crawl into a can of pop or something. Uh, that that's absolutely deadly. You know, they fall in and they're not quite dead. They're kind of struggling on the surface, and um, a young child or a adult takes a, a drink from the can, and boing, they got a wasp in their mouth, and they get stung. And if that gets, if you get stung in the throat, I mean, you can literally choke uh, because your throat swells up from the uh, as the reaction to the sting. So uh, you know, do be careful. But we do start, I think, I think we do need to start nurturing these secondary pollinators. Uh, they are going to be hugely important in the future. And um, so everything from mason bees, uh, parasitic wasps, to hornets, uh, ants, flies, and uh, wasps. Uh, we need to encourage all these species 
in the meantime, whilst we put pressure on our government to stop using pesticides and the city of Quarter Lakes in particular to start spraying pesticides around waterways and bee yards. Okay, take the time to find out where these locations are and actually bees are everywhere. There are wild bees as well as domestic bees. Okay, so really everywhere is a bee yard. So I would highly recommend that you find a physical method of dealing with uh, the verges and around bridges, the overgrowth of weeds and what have you. And um, maybe we as a population need to get used to that scruffiness knowing that that is providing uh, seeds for birds, uh, flowers for bees and uh, protection for other wildlife, small wildlife. Okay, and that small wildlife goes to feed larger wildlife. Okay, so that's my rant of the day on honeybees. Very, very, very important matter. And uh, I, I hope you'll join me in this crusade that I've been on now for 10 years, trying to get some meaningful legislation taking place here. Okay, so if you have liked this video, please like and subscribe below. And uh, this is Hound Dog Steve signing off, and you have yourself a great evening, and we'll talk soon. Take care now.